So, DeepSeek has just turned the AI world upside down, not just with a new model, but with a statement, one that questions everything we thought we knew about AI development. Let's start with Janus Pro, their latest multimodal AI model. It's making waves for a reason. DeepSeek claims it outperforms OpenAI's DALI 3, as well as other giants like Pixar Alpha and Emu 3 Gen on major AI benchmarks like Genival and DPG Bench. If you're into AI, you know these benchmarks matter. They measure how well models generate and understand images. But here's the twist. The biggest version, Janus Pro 7B, is supposedly beating those top-tier models. And it wasn't developed by a Silicon Valley giant, but by a Chinese startup. This alone would be enough to get people talking, but DeepSeek wasn't done. Just days before unveiling Janus Pro, they shocked the industry with their R1 language model, one that reportedly matched OpenAI's GPT-4 performance. And here's the kicker. While OpenAI spent billions developing their models, DeepSeek claims they did it for just five to six million dollars. Now that number raises eyebrows. Could it really be possible to build a GPT-4 level model at a fraction of the cost? And if so, are big AI companies burning money for nothing? These questions are sending shockwaves through the industry, making everyone wonder if AI's next big breakthroughs are going to come from small, nimble teams rather than massive corporations. The fact that DeepSeek is based in Hangzhou, China, adds another layer to the story. The U.S. has imposed strict export controls on advanced AI chips, particularly those from NVIDIA, to slow down China's AI progress. But DeepSea claims they trained their models using NVIDIA's H800 chips, less powerful than the restricted ones, yet still achieving near GPT-4 results. This raises a big question. Are these expensive restrictions even working? And if DeepSeek can reach this level without the best hardware, what does that say about the billions being spent by Western tech giants? Then, just as DeepSeek was skyrocketing in popularity, something else happened. A cyber attack. Their AI assistant app had just hit the top of the U.S. Apple App Store's free applications list when suddenly they were forced to limit registrations. A massive wave of users flooded the platform, their website crashed, and they announced a hacking attempt. The timing was suspicious. Was it just a coincidence? Or did someone want to disrupt their momentum? Either way, it only fueled the hype. Now, back to Janus Pro. Unlike many AI models that specialize in either text or image generation, this one is aiming to do it all. It can generate images at a resolution of 768 by 768, analyze visuals, and handle text-based tasks, all within a single unified transformer architecture. The best part? DeepSeek went fully open source. They released the model's code and weights on Hugging Face for anyone to download, a stark contrast to OpenAI, which keeps everything behind closed doors. But how good is Janus Pro, really? It depends on how you look at it. The flagship 7B version competes with DALI 3 in image generation, but user tests show mixed results. While it does well in describing objects and their relationships, it struggles with deeper reasoning, like interpreting the symbolic meaning behind an image. GPT-4 Vision, by comparison, is better at understanding metaphors and abstract concepts. On the image generation side, Janus Pro produces decent results but falls short in certain areas, like sharpness and artistic style, compared to highly specialized models. A test comparing it with SDXL, for instance, showed that Janus Pro stayed more faithful to the user prompt, nailing details like the cute baby fox in a fall setting, but SDXL's output was sharper and more visually refined. The trade-off? Janus Pro offers versatility, while other models excel in specific areas. The open source nature of Janus Pro means the community can fine tune and improve it over time. We've seen this before. Open source models get better through collaboration. But here's a warning. If you're testing Janus Pro, make sure you're using the actual 7B version. Some mislabeled smaller models are floating around and they won't deliver the same performance. But DeepSeek's rise isn't just shaking up AI development, it's hitting the stock market hard. As soon as news broke that DeepSeek built a GPT-4 level model for a fraction of the usual cost, tech stocks took a hit. NVIDIA, the biggest AI chip supplier, reportedly lost $600 billion in market value in a single day. That's insane. The logic? 
if companies don't need the most cutting edge chips to train state of the art models, Nvidia's explosive growth might not be as unstoppable as investors once thought. This realization is sparking a bigger debate. Are we overspending on AI? If a Chinese startup can achieve high performance without the massive budgets of OpenAI or Google, is the entire industry approaching AI development the wrong way? Even OpenAI CEO Sam Altman responded to the situation, saying he's impressed by DeepSeek's achievements, but that OpenAI will respond with even better models. He also doubled down on the idea that more computing resources are still key, hinting that OpenAI's billion-dollar investments aren't going anywhere. Meanwhile, the White House also weighed in. Former President Donald Trump called DeepSeek's rise a wake-up call, emphasizing that American tech companies need to stay competitive. With ongoing debates over restricting AI chip exports to China, this development is forcing governments to rethink their strategies. But there's also concern about DeepSeek's background. They've only been around since 2023, and some wonder if they have ties to the Chinese government. Reports suggest their AI assistant refuses to answer questions about China's leadership raising speculation about censorship. Still, none of this stopped their app from becoming the number one free application in the US App Store, beating even ChatGPT. So what's next? The AI arms race isn't slowing down. Big tech companies OpenAI, Google, Meta, and Amazon have already committed billions to AI research, and they're unlikely to change course just because of DeepSeek. Meta alone is pouring money into AI infrastructure, while OpenAI has plans for a $500 billion global data center network. But here's the key question. Is all this spending even necessary? DeepSeek claims they built their model for just $5.6 million. Even if that number doesn't include earlier research costs, it's still significantly cheaper than the billion spent by U.S. tech giants. The company says they used new training techniques, focusing only on the most relevant data at any given time, reducing computing needs. They also leveraged open source projects from companies like Alibaba and Meta, fine tuning them into their own product. And that's where things get interesting. Meta has been a big proponent of open source AI, releasing models like Llama. Ironically, that same open source philosophy might have helped DeepSeek get ahead some within Meta are now frustrated, asking, how did a smaller company with fewer resources beat us to this breakthrough? This all raises an even bigger concern. Are we racing toward artificial general intelligence faster than expected? UC Berkeley professor Stuart Russell warned that this competition could be more dangerous than the space race, with AI advancing beyond our control. Even AI company executives have hinted at potential risks. One thing is clear, DeepSeek's rise is a reality check for Silicon Valley. Their success questions the idea that you need billions of dollars and top-tier NVIDIA chips to train leading AI models. This has real-world consequences, not just for AI development, but for stock markets, government policies, and the global AI race. So, is DeepSeek's success just a one-time disruption, or are we seeing the beginning of a new AI era where small, agile teams challenge the industry's biggest players? Let me know what you think in the comments. And if you want to keep up with the latest AI developments, don't forget to like this video and subscribe. More updates are coming soon. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.